One of the things that we've covered and debated extensively here is how exactly the government should be responding to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic and, of course, the economic fallout from that pandemic. So joining us now to talk a little bit about this, Irami Osei Frimpong. He's known as the Funky Academic on YouTube, a great friend of the show. Irami, it's great to see you. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me back. And I think we can clarify a few very important issues in the next 10 minutes or so. So I'm kind of excited. Great. Let's do it. So, I mean, let's talk a little bit about this is what we were saying before the break about the government and its role in response to this coronavirus crisis. You're saying that there's a misguided view that if the government if the government's view is just to secure private property, that that misses what the broader role of government should be and maybe be, needs to be. Let's talk about that. Right. So. The government's supposed to secure our freedom, and oftentimes that means securing our private property. If I buy a car and I want to use the car to uh, go to work tomorrow, the government, in securing my uh, ownership of that car, is allowing me to make plans and enact my plans. Because freedom is going to come down to your ability to make plans and enact those plans. And oftentimes those plans go through using your private property. Right. So I should be able to go to sleep tonight knowing that when I wake up tomorrow morning, Crystal's not going to come to my house and steal my car. Right. <laughs> so that that uh, is the way that the government secures my ability to make plans and enact those plans. The problem is we have a lot of institutions through which we make plans that don't have to do with private property. And that's where we get confused because our kind of our constitution and our way of thinking about government came from a time, a pre-industrial time, where pretty much freedom meant being able to do with what your stuff, like what you wanted to do. And that's why for Locke, private property was, you know, you work with it, then it's yours, and then the government's supposed to pretty much, pretty much just negotiate property disputes. And for Hobbes, the, um, the uh, uh, property is simply what the government's willing to secure for you. But really, and this we kind of didn't figure it out until probably the 1800s, property is really a, a relationship between people. It's a relationship of mutual interaction between people, a mutual recognition between people. So that um, regardless of if, I, if I'm a contractor and I go and, and, and give Sagar a new kitchen or refinish his basement, it doesn't become my basement because I worked on it. No, mm -hmm. it was always Sagar's basement, right? And even though I mixed my work with it, it didn't become mine because I worked on it. It never was mine because we both recognized that it was always Sagar's. Mm -hmm. So this becomes important once we understand government's role in securing this mutual recognition that allows us to make plans and enact those plans. Sometimes they have to do with property, sometimes they don't. But what what we have to understand is once we understand that a government secures this mutual recognition, we kind of see how we need each other, our, inter our kind of our interactions with each other under these institutions of recognitions in order to be free. And when I talk to students about this, I always mention the 1980 Olympic Games, right? The 1980 Olympic Games are very famous because we pulled out kind of the last minute. So you had all of these athletes who like had peaked for all of their lives and then right before the Olympics, like we pull out. So they weren't able to, depending on who you talk to, they weren't really free of self-determining because mm -hmm. the government didn't secure their ability to be what they had planned to be. And so we have to understand um, what COVID does to our ability to make plans and what the government can do in response to secure our plans. Because in securing our plans and our ability to enact our plans, that's how they secure our freedom. And, if, and so property is one form of securing yeah. freedom, but interpersonal and institutional relationships are another form of securing freedom. And we have to understand that anything that gets in the way of our ability to make plans and enact them, that's an enemy. Like <laughs> anything that's getting in our way to make plans and enact them, that's an enemy. And people, when I explain this to students once again, I say, like, for example, if an alien ship were to just kind of land on the Washington Mall and someone were to go, hey, Crystal, an alien ship just kind of landed in the in the Washington Mall. You want to go out and interview them? What would you say, Crystal? Um, yeah, well, yeah, not, say not yes. today. <laughs> I'd say no, yes. Well, <laughs> See, this is why the right wins, by the way. They're willing to yeah. risk life for like yeah. all of these other things. But, I'd so say, Crystal, how about why Skype, you maybe? How about my Skype? <laughs> right, why wouldn't you just like, you know, take your nice little microphone? Well, you're charming. Why wouldn't you just want to go interview them? Why not? See, it seems yeah. risky. Right. It seems risky, right? Because you don't know whether they recognize you as a colleague, 
as a cockroach, as a god. You don't know anything about them. There are fascinating discourses about like settlers once they first like came into new lands, like how to negotiate those those institutions so that we can be free. They don't know how to treat you. You don't know how to treat them. And they might treat us like, like I said, cockroaches or they might worship us. We don't know. So working that out is a bit of a job. So you don't know like what you can plan for and you don't know if they're going to respect your freedom. Right. So the um, we're in a space right now that Americans don't know what they can plan for. And the government's not helping them. Actually, some, that's not true. Some Americans do know. Some yeah. Americans do know what they can plan for. If you have Nancy Pelosi's um, cell phone number, if you have Donald Trump's number, you know what you can plan for. Right. And in right. that way, you're free. Right. So lay that on just a little bit more concretely with how it intersects with the coronavirus crisis and potentially government response. And I also was um, you said something very pro provocative, which is anyone who's keeping you from executing your plans is an enemy. Um, how does that relate, do you think, to the protests, the sort of right wing protests that we're seeing cropping up across the country? Well, the right wing protests cropping up across the country, um, I actually I actually think they are appropriately using leverage. Right now, we have to understand we've been conscripted to work for the government. Hmm. It's not just the essential workers at, at, at Kroger or, or picking strawberries. We've been conscripted to work for the government and what we produce is safety. That's our product. And the moment we stop producing and the government forced us to produce safety and it and we can produce safety. I would like to negotiate the terms under which we've produced safety. We've kind of been forced into a, a kind of jury duty. You know how we pay juries a pittance to come mm -hmm. and do their public service? Mm -hmm. Right now, people being forced to stay at home are being paid a pittance to do their public service. And I'd like to renegotiate those terms. And the only way I think that working citizens get leverage is to say, like, no. I'm not going to produce safety for you unless you secure me, I think, a federal job guarantee, right? So I think um, we have, what, 22 million, I think was the number that I yes. last heard. 22 million people have, have, uh, are now in underemployment, unem uh. Uh, filed for unemployment. And honestly, the, uh, the, the governor of Georgia has said he was going to open up Georgia on Friday. And I think that's just to keep the unemployment rolls down, not because we're ready but because he wants to just keep the unemployment rolls up. So who knows the destabilizing influence of COVID-19 on people's plans and lives. But the way to stabilize that would be a federal job guarantee, a job that says, the government says, I got you. It's okay. I got you. I'm going to give you replacement pay as you're on quarantine. But once quarantine is lifted, there will be a place for you to, to go to, 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 to work, and you will get you know $20 an hour working and until doing some because we have a lot of work to, to be done especially a lot of care work that needs to be done until um the private market can absorb you right mm -hmm. so if the government gave that kind of security to people um i think we could quarantine in, in peace and create safety for the government which is demanding that we create safety and do so in a way that was less anxious and in a way that actually preserved i think I think that's freedom. interesting, Irami. I mean, but again, what you're what you're suggesting is quite provocative. It's that people have to go out there and get and basically protest against the government in order to yes. get what they want. Let's talk about but, why. Why is that the only way? Why is that the only way? Let's talk about that. You need to dramatize the struggle. You need to drama. This is what King knew. This is what Gandhi knew. You need to dramatize the struggle. And COVID-19 creates the conditions where it's unseemly to dramatize the struggle insofar as like you have to go out there in mass and threaten to breathe on people unless you're treated with dignity and respect. Like that's, that's, I mean, I'm not gonna go out and say you gotta go out and start licking things, but I am saying that until regular citizens say that we are not going to shelter in place without like some sort of security from our government, then the people who are going to run the government are going to dictate the terms of our life. When we come out of this quarantine, it's not going to be on the terms that we went into this quarantine on. It's going to be on the terms that have been dictated by the Fed and those with secure plumbing into the banking system. And that's mm -hmm. like that's not appropriate. So in order yeah. to dramatize the struggle, in order to get a bailout that's actually adequate to our needs and to at least pretend that my plans are as important as Zuckerberg's or Blankenfein's, I'm going to need the government to secure me in my quarantining. I'm going to need the government to say, like, look, we made you quit your job. We made you disrupt your life. We're going to secure your plans 
and get, make sure that you have a job coming out of this. And if you do that federal job guarantee, that means all of the ancillary institutions, the churches that are now losing tithes, the aggregate demand that's now gone down because people are going to be scared to spend money. Uh -huh. Right, because we've destabilized their life. If the government actually um, secures and provides certainty in people's plans for their lives, they will continue to support all of these ancillary institutions that I think make civil society kind of a robust place. But and the government Army, needs to do that. Yes. How do you, though, fight back against the, you know, the media demonization of that kind of a provocative action? I mean, we see the way that these protests are being governed. Look, some of these people are idiots, and I'm not going to get inside their minds as to whether the motivations are pure or not, right? There's always, within any movement, there are always people who can be demonized. In fact, we have seen in certain places a spike in coronavirus spread um, already resulting from these protests. So how do you deal with that media sort of vilification of what you are proposing. All right, so the media is going to vilify what we're proposing because of... Uh because the media, these are new arguments, right? But you do it the way Trump did it. Like, you, you do it the way you know who you are and what you're about. You're saying, like, look, I don't want to be out in these streets. I want to quarantine at home with my wonderful family. However, my freedom uh, matters more, and I'm going to need you to make me whole. I'm going, and this is the only leverage citizens have. And so if you have clear demands, and I think the demand should be threefold. One, hazard pay for the people who are essential workers right now. Should The government should backstop their private payrolls, get them up to starting at $30 an hour. If, you're, if I go to Publix and I see someone working at Publix, that person should be at least making $30 an hour. Two, you need a federal job guarantee for those people who are at home. And with like 75 or 80% replacement pay, start the federal job at, at $15 or $20 an hour. Um, federal job guarantee so they know that they're getting paid now and not just a one-time payment but they can actually make plans because they know that they're mm -hmm. actually working right. just they're just they're just like military people who have been who aren't called in active duty right now they right. have reserve pay right and then three you just need health care right so mm -hmm. you have three clear demands and the only way to dramatize that in a way that will get coverage is by like saying we're not going to be part of the safety factory anymore and that's what we are we've been conscripted into a safety factory. We are hard at work in our homes. We are the equivalent of jurors who have been sequestered for $6 a day. And instead so of being sequestered for $6 yeah. a day, I need, we need real pay. It's a very yeah. interesting uh, thing that you're proposing. You always make us think, Irony. It always does. Thank you, Irony. <laughs> so I I think love it's this is what the right wins in this. Look, if there are, there are people who are willing to fight for a way of life, and there are people who are willing to fight for life. Yeah. The people who are willing to fight for a way of life and die for a way of life, end up ruling the people who will mm -hmm. do anything to live. Well, right? So unless true. we're going to work for the people who are in the streets right now, we need to be in the streets too, making mm -hmm. clear demands. Their problem isn't their tactic. Their problem is their demands. Yeah. Right? We make yeah, clear exactly. demands. We've got to go, Iron Man, unfortunately. But thank you. To Congress. Yeah. Appreciate, Appreciate it, Iron Man. Thank you. No we'll have more rising for you after this.